Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got another Mini in the garage for repair work. And it's a nice road racer. Got a cool graphic Colorado flag on the roof here. But uh, yeah, it's a stunning color, it's metallic blue. Nice little interior upgrades, some wooden dash trimmings. This thing's lovely. I have worked on this car in the past and uh, just gonna have some fun. The owner's got a long list of things to do, and it will eventually be for sale. So I'm gonna do my best with his list. But uh, yeah, check out these cool, cool wheels and stripes down the side. Nice 1275 stripes. Although he's customized them a little bit. Yeah. And let's see what's under the bonnet here. LED rally lights. And under the bonnet, we've got a uh, 1275 A plus high compression motor with a 65D ignition system here. So I'll probably have a quick check here, but again, this car is running fairly well. So hopefully nothing too serious, but uh, pretty standard stuff. HS4 with um, Wax stat, something like that. So yeah. Anyway, let's dig in and see what we can find. So I just pulled the plugs out. And you can see that the uh, outers are running a little bit leaner than the inners, but certainly room for improvement here on the mixture. And they've also got that classic Corona staining. Now this guy does have a dirt road that he drives his car on, so I'm not as concerned about this, but more than likely this is going to get a fresh set of plugs before it goes back to him. So I'll just uh, have a quick check. Check the gap. Oh, would you look at that? 35,000 plug gaps. Absolutely perfect. Nice. Well, at least the gaps are right. Um, these are BPR sixes. So I'll have to check the rest of the ignition system, see what the resistance of these wires are. We might be dropping to the non-resistive plugs, but I don't know what kind of stereo this car has or doesn't have. So I'll just have to check all that. But at least the plugs were the uh, right gap and um, at least the right heat range. But yeah, we'll have to do something about this mixture. It's just a bit too rich. So I'm just going to check coil wire for resistance, um, or a spark plug wire here, just to find out how much resistance there is in these wires. The uh, multimeter shows about 6,000 ohms, so that's about a foot-ish long. So we're looking about 12,000 ohms total resistance in this ignition circuit. Um, I probably fit a fresh set of power spark leads. I may stick with resistor plugs simply because this car does have a stereo and I don't want to cause too much interference with the stereo, but I will discuss it with the owner because I would prefer to run non-resistor plugs, but given the fact that this is a 65D high power ignition system, um, running the resistive plugs would be just fine and then running lower resistance wires just to get the performance out of this ignition system, give it a bit of a boost. But uh, yeah, pretty much standard, standard fare for wires. I wasn't surprised these are a Bosch brand. Um, still in pretty good shape, although they are starting to hold the hold the set, so they are aging out a bit. But next up, I need to check the coil. And let's check the coil here. All the wires removed. This one's showing 1 1.2 ohms. Well, that needs to be replaced because this should be a 0.8 ohm coil. So yeah, definitely needs a coil. So I've got the cap off here, and there's quite a lot of uh, debris building up in here. So, um, you know, plenty of arc build up on the posts. Not too bad, but I noticed that there's a very large uh, collection of deposits over here near cylinder one and just in and out through here. So 
I'm going to go ahead and replace the cap and rotor and then give this a nice clean up, make sure there's none of that debris remaining. Because yeah, I think there must be some arcing happening to the case instead of to a cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, replace all these parts and clean this up. So while I was working on this ignition system, and now it's all replaced, new coil, plugs, gaps, wires, cap and rotor, and I clean all that debris off uh, in the cap. So I was looking around and I noticed that well, the paint looked bubbled up on the subframe here. And I thought, well, where's it coming from? Well, I looked at the booster, couldn't see any, any obvious leaks in the booster. Um, so I started looking around and it looks like the, uh, the clutch slave is, uh, is leaking. You can see all the wetness down there in the bottom of the subframe. Also, if I lift up the boot, it's very wet and damp. So I'll go ahead and do, uh, do this, but, uh, yeah, there's the source of the leak right there. Well, I've gone ahead and done the, uh, clutch safe cylinder. So car's back up and running and driving, uh, end up having to do a full set of brakes all around a bunch of other maintenance work. Um, I did tear my attention to the carburetor and the, uh, the AAU needle I had in it was uh, running too rich. So I switched out to an AEM and I changed the uh, damper oil. So this thing's running pretty sweet now. So one other thing I did end up changing was the entire distributor itself because I noticed that uh, the timing on this unit went to about 20 degrees at 2000 RPMs and then all in it was about 25. And it really needed to be up in the 30, 32 range. So I went ahead and fitted a uh, fast road curved 65D. Um, I you know, took all the new ignition parts and put it onto my, my curved unit. But uh, with this new curved unit, it was able to bring the ignition timing up to about 32 degrees or 31 um, all in. And um, when I took this car off for a test drive, it drove very, very well with the new timing curve. But uh, it, was, it was about five or six degrees too short. Uh, with the old unit so that's why i ended up changing this out it certainly made a difference and was well worth doing on this engine so yeah a lot of work done um oh yeah i got new glass front windshield and side windows and uh i did end up changing out this dashboard assembly the old one the veneer was really cracked on it so we went ahead and uh put a fresh dash into this car and I think it looks a lot nicer now. There's a lot more character here in the woodwork, so it matches the console better and these speaker pods better. So, uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, I did have it out for a test drive earlier. It does drive really well. Very pleasant car to drive. Um, the brakes feel nice with the booster, and yeah, all this, all this nice clean glass makes it a real treat to drive around. So that's it for this car. I finished all the tuning work and repair work that needed to be done. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of this car. I think it's really cool. I like the colors. And I like the flag. But that pretty much is it for the uh, tuning and repair work I had to do on this car. So let me know what you think of it. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys soon.